Hey guys, my name is Shashank Kalanathi. I'm a data analyst, and in this channel, I teach you guys how to break into the world of analytics. Today, we're going to be going through a time lapse I took of recording myself for eight hours straight, basically an entire workday, in order to show you guys what an actual day in the life of a data analyst looks like. You might see a weird filter over the video. I needed to find some way to blur out the text on my screen, and I can't actually like blur out sections of the screen. And unfortunately, I couldn't hire someone else to do it because I can't send the footage off to someone else and have a chance that they might actually see it. So um, let's get right into it. So. As you can see over here, today I'm starting at around 9.30. Uh, I'll start working anywhere from 8.30 to 9.30, just depending on the day. Uh, and today I wanted to go get a breakfast burrito, so I went ahead and did that. So you see the first thing that I'm doing over here, like almost everyone else, responding to emails, responding to Slack messages, just making sure that I'm catching up on uh, anything that uh, people send me. Because a lot of people do start work at like 8 o'clock. Usually those people, I'll, resp I'll respond to them uh, now or on my phone as I'm like going through mor morning errands. So now you'll see I have my IDE up, my integrated development environment. And what I'm doing over here is I am commenting uh, and documenting some code that I'd written the previous day. And it's really important that you document code very close to when you write it. That way it's fresh in your mind. And also that way, in case you ever need to use it in the future, you always have access to it as uh, easily as you can you know, access it and uh, edit it in the future when you need to. Uh, a lot of times people will say that they are bringing, they want you to do an ad hoc analysis. I say there's no such thing as an ad hoc analysis because they're always going to want you to follow up on it and run the query again and again and again in different ways with different cuts. And in order to make sure that I actually uh, can do that effectively, I always comment on my code and make sure that it's very well and easily commented on so it's easy for people to follow what I'm doing. So right now you'll see what I'm doing is I'm actually helping a coworker uh, with some Tableau problems that they have. So this coworker is actually a, a quite the talented data scientist. And you'll see that on analytics teams, there are very different levels of skills in different, uh, different topics, right? Certain people are really good at certain tools, certain people are really good at other tools. And you can get, it can be very intimidating when you see a job description that says you need to know like every single skill out there. Very few people actually know all these skills at a very, very high level. And that's why you work on teams where people can all work together together and help each other out with whatever makes the most sense for them to do. All right, so right now I'm trying to review a PowerPoint deck in preparation for a meeting in the future, but I get a Slack message over here for something that I sent the night before that I got a response for just now and needs to be dealt with right now because basically what I need to do is I need to use Python to extract a bunch of different um, data from different Excel spreadsheets that we give to all of our stores and then put that data into a database. And that entire process, um, after I do that, then a, another analyst will go and actually perform some analyses on it inside the database. So because that analyst can't do their work until I finish my work, I actually will put away the PowerPoint deck or whatever I'm doing now that I have my response and go and try and get this done. So you'll see, um, you may or may not be able to see depending on uh, how blurry the screen is, that I'm switching between an IDE for my Python, Excel for some like just like um, random hard coding that I, I do here and there for some of the edits. And uh, right now I'm on geeksforgeeks.com because you know I forgot how to do something in Python and just quickly uh, looking up uh, how to do that. So I'm running the code right now. It's going through all the different the different Excel spreadsheets, pulling in all the data, manipulating it. And right now I just pulled up dbeaver, which is a SQL editor. And it's what allows me to access the database at our company. So what I'm doing now is I've created a CSV and I'm going to insert this um, data manually because we this month we're actually switching databases that we do this process in and I don't have a way to connect to it using Python, at least not off the top of my head. I do need to set something for that up uh, in the near future, but for this month, I'm just going to manually insert it using dbeaver. Um, so we are now inserting the data and you'll see this process can be a little bit uh, tedious and long. I made a couple of mistakes in inserting the data, so you'll see I come back to it later in the day to correct them. So it's 11.40 a.m. right now. We're at, what, 4.02? So my notes over here say that, yeah, we're still doing this task, which is a combination of Excel, Python, and SQL. Basically, um, the stores, um, because I work at Nordstrom, a major North American fashion retailer, the stores will have their, uh, they'll put the data into an Excel spreadsheet, which I pull using Python. I'll do minor edits in the Excel if I need to, and then I'll use SQL to put that data into a SQL database. All right, so what are we at now? Oh yeah, that's, yeah, we're still doing this. And you'll see, I actually have my uh, personal laptop on the side and I'm just on the verge every once in a while. So this process has a lot of waiting inside it. And 
Um, context switching happens a lot in this type of a job, but you don't want to context switch too much all the time because then like I find that I just get really confused and uh, I'm a lot more prone to making mistakes. So actually what I'm doing right now is I'm going to uh, the database and I'm dropping a couple of records because they came in inaccurately. And then when I unioned everything, it looks like some of the records don't go in the way that they're supposed to. So basically I'm running a bunch of SQL queries in order to clean up the data and make sure it works uh, appropriately. So right now I'm just taking a small break or I took a small break for a couple minutes to just go, you know, grab some water and stuff. You don't want to stand in front of the computer for way too long. Um, I just find that I work less effectively then. And I'm actually conversing directly with my coworker and I started a meeting with my coworker, the one that uh, is depending on me to do my part of the job so they can do theirs. And we're collaborating to make sure I'm, uh, I, I called them on the, on the Zoom to make sure that the input that I put inside the database is something that they can use. This is a great tip that I, uh, or something I learned the hard way working in corporate America. You always wanna check and make sure that what you're doing, if you're part of a multi-step process, um, you wanna have verification from the other side that they are good with what you're doing because, um, and, and I usually like to do it over like voice or like the uh, phone or something. That way any small niggles or anything can be figured out then and there instead of like going back and forth quite a bit. All right, so I finished inserting the data and now I am taking my lunch break where I'm just on the New York Times and on Reddit just reading some stuff, uh, theverge.com. Um, I take lunch breaks anywhere from, sometimes I don't take lunch breaks, like I'll eat my lunch and work at the same time. Uh, now I'm on TikTok, now I'm just texting some people. Uh, I think it's really important to take breaks uh, throughout the day, you know, text some people, especially when you're working from home, text some people, go on Reddit a little bit, clear out your mind. Uh, I actually find that it keeps me more energized and uh, makes me less prone to making mistakes. So breaks are really, really important. All right. So it looks like we have a couple more minutes of this break. I didn't eat that much lunch uh, this day. So it was, a, it was a pork rice or something that I'd created the day before. So I'm using uh, HelloFresh actually, a pretty cool service. Not sponsored, at least not yet. Okay, so now I've gone back to reviewing that PowerPoint deck that I mentioned in the morning uh, in preparation for a meeting that's going to start at 2 p.m. But it looks like I got a call from someone who is uh, asking me to check the accuracy of some data that I put together. So it turns out that the uh, I didn't understand the business logic behind this data very well. So I'm correcting. They're walking me through it and, uh, you know, very graciously trying to help me fix these mistakes right now. So we're going through them, making sure that I understand the business logic and I correct it as quickly as I can, um, just on Discord for another minute or two to respond to some messages. I'm trying to be better about responding to messages that people send me. And now I'm going back to that PowerPoint deck and I have about 10 minutes to go over it before we have our meeting at two o'clock. So this meeting that we have at two o'clock, we're gonna be discussing a major project that needs to be turned in by H1, half one. And um, I need to be prepared with my uh, notes on the PowerPoint in order to actually contribute to the discussion. So I add my comments to the PowerPoint deck, but it turns out they want it in Slack, so I just copy and paste them into Slack. Meeting started right now. Uh, I crack a joke here or there. Um, I'm a, I am I like to crack jokes a lot. It's just, uh, you know, kind of who I am. So sending Slack messages of uh, different questions that I have about the PowerPoint deck, and we're going through it, answering people's questions, and I step back to go get some water or something. So my apartment's small enough to where I can like physically step away from my computer and still um, hear, uh, hear, hear everyone and see my screen actually, um, which is nice in some ways. So now we're just discussing uh, our understanding of the PowerPoint deck, making sure that everyone's on board with what needs to get done over the next couple of months in order to deliver this by H1, half one. H1 or Q2, some people call it Q2. So reviewing some stuff. I just noticed that I could uh, do a little bit of formatting whenever uh, some of the, if I know the answer to some of the questions. So there is a assignment that I was doing where I needed to put the results in an Excel spreadsheet for a stakeholder. So I just do some formatting here, there, whenever I can fit it in. Going back to commenting some of my code, I just I remembered in the middle of this meeting that I had made changes to the code in that meeting that I had right before this one, and I need to actually reflect those in the comments that I made. So I'm just pushing those, cha those changes to GitLab while listening to the meeting. Depending on the intensity of what's going on, you, know, you can do a little bit of work during a meeting and still listen, um, but you have to be very careful of that. And we have a manager on our team who made the very good point that like you should be, um, uh, you shouldn't be in meetings that you're not like paying attention to. And I, you know, I agree. So, um, but it was just a couple like comments I added here and there. All right, so it looks like I'm taking a small break right now. Uh, let's see, we are at nine twenty nine.
So it looks like there was an error in that um, report or an error in that database import that I did uh, at around noon. So we're correcting those errors right now and making sure that my coworker has everything that they need in order to complete their end of the uh, task. Again, whenever you switch databases, there's always going to be some problems. Like some of my SQL code had to change. Some connections were broken. Um, hopefully next month it'll be a lot smoother. And then we have one more call about that uh, task I was working on in the morning and right before that two o'clock meeting where we're basically just discussing what needs to, uh, we're, we're just checking the business logic to make sure it's all kosher and everything makes um, sense. All right, so 10.15. Oh, so this is fun. So what happens is now that I've created this Excel uh, document, I am sharing it on OneDrive, but because I moved it in my computer, like I moved directories in my computer, the OneDrive syncing broke. And so I spent probably 30 to 45 minutes trying to fix a OneDrive syncing error. So, you know, in this job, you'll run into all kinds of problems with technology. It's not always Python and SQL problems. Sometimes it's just basic computer problems where like OneDrive doesn't sync the way it should. Um, and so me and my coworker were seeing different numbers because my, my new numbers hadn't synced to their system yet. And so I spent some time fixing that, got a snack. And then now it is uh, four o'clock, right? So at four o'clock, I like to uh, make sure I don't take on new tasks that'll take on, take more than an hour. So if you're paying attention, you'll notice that like it seems tasks take about two hours to complete. Um, and so I'm trying to see like what are like some loose ends I could finish before uh, clocking out for the day. Because if you take on a task that could take over an hour, you could easily be at work until 6.30 or 7. And um, you know, every once in a while, that's totally fine. But if you keep doing that, then I, I actually feel like it, I, what I found out is that if I don't have some hard quitting time, um, then I actually work more slowly because I know I can work into the night. So by giving myself a strict time where I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop right now unless something has, like comes up. Uh, I actually find that I work a lot more efficiently, but it looks like the day is about to end. Just responding to some final Slack messages, copying some SQL code to make sure everything syncs to GitLab the way it's supposed to. And I think we are almost done. Sending a message or two. I'm listening to a Harvard Business Review um, podcast after hours. Great podcast. Really, really like it. Sending some final emails with deliverables that people ask for, making sure that they know that those are those have been given to them. And at about 4.42 for today, I couldn't think of any other tasks that would take less than 20 minutes to finish. So I just called it quits and uh, called it a day. So, And you know, I think that's something that's important to uh, for people to do as well. You want to make sure, like I remember uh, at my first job, I would work until like nine o'clock fairly consistently. Um, and, you know, it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world because in the sense that like, you know, I got promoted fairly quickly. Um, but I realized after a while that by being so willing to work extra hours, like like a lot of extra hours, um, I wasn't working as efficiently as I could have. Um, and so at uh, in future jobs, I've tried to limit the number of hours that I work to, you know, a regular eight hours or something. Um, and doing that part of that is just making sure that you take on tasks, you know, you can finish within a set amount of time. Uh, because the problem is say you have a task that takes two hours and you decide to cut it midway, then you will spend probably, you could spend maybe upwards of 30 minutes, like restarting your brain in the morning, trying to get that done. So I try and make sure that I balance out how uh, much I do my work over time, but thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I can do more of these if you guys are interested. I felt like this is probably the most realistic view uh, that I can give you as to what a data analyst does on a given day. So just as a quick overview, what I did was I um, I pushed some code I wrote the night before into GitLab, added some comments to it to make sure that anytime I need to pull this in the future, I know exactly what I'm doing and I can like future Shashank will not uh, regret, uh, past Shashank not documenting stuff. Um, I helped a coworker, um, who, with some Tableau questions that they might have. Great thing about working on a team is that people have different skill sets and you all share skills in order to help better each other. So, you know, feel free to ask questions. People love helping out in my experience. Uh, after that, I took a small break. Um, and then one thing I didn't mention is I was actually doing some HR stuff, uh, right after I helped my friend and took a small break because, um, I mean, you know, admin stuff's part of the job too. Uh, I had a couple of friends that submitted some resumes. So I was just getting the resumes into the system. Uh, and then making sure that the HR managers knew that those uh, resumes were available. Then I started reviewing a PowerPoint deck for a meeting that we had later in that day, but I actually got a Slack message that I, uh, and then had the context switch towards the database insertion job that I had. And then took a lunch break, lots of Reddit, texting, TikTok. Um, then I tried to get back to that PowerPoint deck again, but got a call about some code that I'd written earlier, the code in the morning actually, and then had to discuss what was wrong with the uh, bug that I'd created. And then the and 10 minutes before the uh, meeting I was preparing for started, I went over that PowerPoint deck, added my comments as I needed to, 
had the meeting, did, and then got a call uh, about the task I was, the database insert task I was working on, and uh, fixed an error in that to make sure that my coworker could do uh, their part. Um, had one more meeting on that code that I'd written in the morning, and then um, fixed a OneDrive syncing issue, and this is probably at around four o'clock that this happened, and then finished up any work for the day, spent the next like 30 to 40 minutes just doing some odd ends here and there. Um, Stuff that, you know, I knew wouldn't take me more than an hour to do. But thank you guys so much for joining me. If you like what you saw today, make sure to like and subscribe the video. It is, I'm trying to get to 150,000 subscribers this year. And uh, any help will be greatly appreciated. But I really hope that you guys like this. And I felt like this was the absolute best way to give you guys a, like, real life view of what a data analyst does in the eight hours that they work in a day. Um, this is just one of the things that I, uh, like one of my days, but like day from day changes a lot. Sometimes we have my like code reviews and stuff. So if you guys want, if you want to see more of that, feel free to let me know. But uh, without further ado, I'll let you guys go. Thank you guys and have a great day.